last day uh, we have learned to um, design a sequential modules or actually what do we mean by sequential circuits and um, how we can store one bit uh, memory or how the sequential modules are used as a memory. Then uh, um, we have seen the construction or the design of the SR latch, the clocked latch, the deep flip flop uh, etcetera. Now, today we will continue the discussion on the sequential modules, the other different type of sequential uh, modules that are being used in real life circuits. But before that, uh, we will see that what do we mean by the propagation delay, setup time, hold time and actually how these times are uh, affecting the actual value of the uh, at the output line. So, first we see the propagation delay and it is defined as the time taken for any change at inputs to affect outputs. Say if we consider one D flip flop, then change on D that will uh, um, affect the change on Q. Now, the time taken to propagate this effect from D to Q we, we are calling that is the propagation delay. Now, setup time, the data on inputs D must be held steady for at least some time before the clock changes, so that we can get the uh, fault free output. And this time, before the clock changes the time uh, for which it is needed to keep steady the uh, data inputs or the inputs at the uh, input line, it is called the setup time. Similarly, the hold time, hold means the, the previous value uh, holds at the output line. Last day we have learned that thing. So, after the clock changes, the time needed to keep steady the input lines or the inputs at the line D is called the hold time. So, data on inputs D must be held steady for at least this time after the clock changes. Now, if we see our, on the last day what we have seen the um, uh, deep flip flop again that it has only one input and another inverted input that means, from the same input it is as the R and the clock is fed at the both the end gate and then it is actually our SR latch that NOR gate, two cross coupled NOR gates. So, this already we have seen last day. Now, with respect to this or the timing specifications of the D latch if we see, then what will be the propagation delay, setup time and the hold time that we will be checking. See, these are the timing specification. Now, first this is my input line. D. This is my clock and this is the output Q. Now, the D changes from 0 to 1. So, this is the line that this is the line when the D changes or this is the time when D or the input changes. See the clock changes from 0 to 1, this is the time. So, this is my clock changes. So, this should be because the setup time we have defined that the time that when it is uh, keep steady 
before the clock changes that means the inputs d inputs. So, this is my this should be my t setup. So, this is my t s t that t s t is my setup time this is my setup time. Now, after the clock changes the again input should be steady. So, here here it is after the clock changes. So, this is my this is t, t setup and this should be the whole time that means, T H T this is the whole time. Now, this is my the for the clock signal that see the clock changes 0 to 1 and this is clock this is 0 to 1 and this is my 1 to 0. So, this is my T w the clock width or clock time. Now, the propagation delay how we have defined again if we see that how we have defined the propagation delay see See propagation delay we have taken the time taken for any change at inputs to affect the outputs. So, here we must see the input, input and the output. So, if we see now the input and the see now the input changes at this time and the but the output changes output changes so this is my q and this q changes at this position so this is my output changes now if we see that this is my 0 to 1 and that the mid position this is my d equal to d becomes 1. So, this is my propagation delay that T p d the propagation delay time. So, again if we write this is the T setup time, this is the T hold time, T hold time and this is the pre propagation time and this is my T w the clock time. Now, if we consider the latch, if we consider the latch then similarly that this is again D and clock if we give that. So, this is a clock latch then similarly the here the d changes from 0 to 1, the clock changes from 0 to 1 this is the position, here the clock changes from 1 to 0 
and here the d changes from 1 to 0. Now, similarly that when d changes from 0 to 1 here the the q changes that means, my output the output changes from 0 to 1 is this position. So, now see for the latch that this is the this is the input change and this is my output change and this time difference we have defined as the propagation delay d p d because the the time taken to affect the change of inputs to the change of outputs. So, this is my this time. Now, when the clock changes this is the time the clock changes and this is the time the output changes. So, this is again with respect to clock the the propagation changes T p and as usual this is my uh, set up time that after the before the clock changes this should be the set up time and hold time. this is the these are the two timings. Now, so far we have uh, discussed the latches. So, if we summarize what we have read about the latches that two cross coupled nor gates form an SR latch the set and reset latch. A clock tesser latch has an additional input that controls when settling and resetting can be taking place. A D latch has a single data input, the output is held when the clock input is a 0, the input is copied to the output when the clock input is a 1, because we have seen that when clock is 1, the D equal to if D equal to 1, if D equal to 1, then Q equal to. 1 when the clock is clock is high. Now, the output of the clock latches is transparent. Now, we see that latches and flip flops. So, these terms are sometimes used confusingly. So, we must clear this uh, the what is the difference between these two. See normally a latch is not clocked whereas, a flip flop is always clocked. So, initially when we have uh, defined the SR latch there was no clock only this is a two cross coupled nor gate was connected and S and R the two inputs were there. So, a clock latch can therefore, equally be referred to as a flip flop. So, S R flip flop D flip flop we can tell now clocked S R latch is the S R flip flop clocked D latch is the D flip flop. So, I can write that clocked clocked latch clocked latch is a can be a flip flop can be a flip flop. However, we will see that all practical flip flops are H triggered. Another uh, conversion is there that normally the flip flops are used in real life circuit they are H triggered and sometimes latches included and the the within flip flops as a subtype. So, sometimes it is a level triggered 
flip flop is also called or the level triggered uh, latch. Okay. So, sometimes latches are also included within flip flops as a subtype. So, uh, we see that it is a uh, positive edge triggered flip flop. So, this is a normal D flip flop, this is my D input, this is a this is a D flip flop, D flip flop and this is the Q output, one clock is there clock input and this is a positive edge trigger. That means, when this is a edge that means, this is a 0 to 1, this is 0, this is 1. So, this becomes a po positive edge trigger. That means, whenever the clock changes from 0 to 1, the clock changes 0 to 1, then only then only the D input is enabled and it will affect the output. Now, it is a level sensitive latch. So, this is a H triggered and this is a level sensitive. So, again we can tell that this is here also clock is one input, but this is a level sensitive, this is not H. Similarly, this is a D input, this is a this is a level sensitive latch. So, this we can call the latch and this we can call a flip flop, this we can call a flip flop and this is a latch. Now, if we see the timing diagram of the flip flop and latch, see this is my input, D input. These are my clocks and this is Q means these are the outputs we have taken one for the flip flop another for the latch. Now, if we see the uh, timing diagram then see the D changes from 0 to 1 and the clock changes slightly after that. So, only the effect will be the Q will be changing from 0 to 1 when the clock will change not the not here when the D has changed from 0 to 1. The, here D has changed to 0 to 1, but clock has changed slightly after that. See here. So, the output will change when the it will be a 0 to 1 H triggered, 0 to 1 the H triggered clock that time the output will be 1. Now, D becomes 1. So, again it is it becomes 1. See here D becomes 1 to 0. So, that change is is shown at the output line when actually the Q is changed from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. Here it is again it is a 0 to 1, next case it will be there. If it is a positive edge trigger then it is a 0 to 1. So, when the it is a 0 to 1 that time only the output changes from 1 to 0. So, here it is a output changes, here the output changes 0 to 1, here the output changes 1 to 0. And see both the times when the output changes, when the output changes that at the at the positive edge, positive edge of clock, positive edge of clock. So, this is that flip flop. So, that means this is a flip flop is a we can tell the flip flop is a edge triggered. Uh, flip flop. Now, we see 
that uh, what will happen for the latch. See if it is a latch that means it should be a level sensitive not the edge. Now again the D changes here the D changes at this position 0 to 1 the input changes input changes, but the clock here it is a level this is a 1 level this is 0 level. So, this is 1 this is 0. So, as it is a level sensitive so the latch will it becomes 1. So, the, the latch output becomes 0 to 1. Now, the similarly the D becomes slightly D becomes 1 to 0 slightly before the clock changes 0 to 1. See here also the clock level changes 0 to 1 level. So, the first time that latch changes from 1 to 0. See in this phase in this position the out, uh, output of flip flop and output of the latch are same. Now, if we see that the next data input when the data input changes from 1 to 0 and 1 to 0. Now, at this position see this data becomes data is 1, data is 1, but the latch say as it is a level sensitive. So, the when the clock becomes a 1 then only it is see this position it is changes that means I can write in this way see here this data changes from 1 to data changes from 1 to 0 and and data changes from 1 to 0, but see the it is a clock level not the clock edge, but still the as it is a level sensitive. So, as the level becomes 1, so the D changes, but if we see the output of the flip flop as it is the edge triggered and the edge, had, edge has not changed. The clock output is had not changed it is a it is becomes 1. So, the Q flip flop is not changed. So, here 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 there is no effect. So, we consider this position and this position. These two differs in flip flop and latches. Here as age has not changed, so that is why it is unchanged. As here age has not changed, but level is 1. So, as D changes that the latch output changes here. So, now clock latches are level triggered just now what we have seen when the clock is high inputs and thus outputs can change. A flip flop is edge triggered either by leading or falling edge means the positive or negative edge triggered of the clock pass. Now, 
if it is a I take one clock. So, this is one clock pulse. So, here here in this edge the clock becomes the clock becomes 0 to 1. This we are calling the leading edge. This is leading edge or or positive edge positive edge divided. Here this becomes 1 to 0, this we are calling this we are calling the falling edge or negative edge divide. Now, ideally it responds to the inputs only at a particular instant of time. Now, again if we see the R s latch last day we, we have uh, seen again if we remember the diagram. So, it was simply two NOR gates this is one R input one S input another input is feedback and this is q 1 q bar it was the now if we draw the truth table say that q means the q t and q t plus 1 means say at any instant of time t we are considering the inputs of this. So, this is at one instant of time that this is my these are my inputs these are my inputs and this is the output. Now, both s and r 0 0 0 that time that state can be present state can be 0 or 1. Now, whatever be the value we have seen that if r and s both are 0 0 then the it should be the next state should be the present or, or current state should be the previous state or next state should be the present state that means, this is a hold condition. So, whatever the q t value the q t plus 1 value are the same that means, it is 0 and 1. Now, when s and r value is 0 1 0 1 then if q t is 0 that means, that presence at t th instant of time thus q value is 0 then output is 0 even if it is 1, but the R s value is 0 1 the output is 0. So, this is my reset condition. Similarly, when it is 1 0 whatever be the value of q the next it will be 1 and that we are defined as the set. If it is 1 1 whatever be the value of q t then it is not allowed or last day we have defined undetectable or unpredictable the question given question marks that means, it is not allowed. So, already last day we have seen this is a, the truth table of the SR latch. Now, if this input and output this truth table always we can uh, draw a Carnot map of that. So, there are three inputs there are three inputs the s r and q t and only one output q t plus 1 say the next state. So, the, the if it is 0 0 0 just we, we put that value if it is 0 0 0 0 or 1 
actually q t value is q t plus 1. So, 0 1 this is 0 1. If it is S r is 0 1 always it should be 0 0. If it is 1 0 always it should be 1 1 and if it is 1 1 this is my cross means undefined or undetectable. So, from here if we from the Carnot map we can derive the characteristic equation as the the next state or the or the next output is the S plus R complement of Q T means the next state will be the R 1 into the present state. So, this should be the characteristic equation of the SLH. Now, we uh, see another design of latch, so that we can avoid this confusing states. Now, here the we have to fit the output in such a way, so that never the input or the R s values can be 1 1, because what we have seen that if the if the R s value becomes 1, if my R equal to 1 and S equal to 1, then only this Q becomes unpredictable or. So, we want to avoid these states, we want to avoid. The flip flop is one uh, simpler solution. Another simple solution is that G k. See, here we have taken uh, two inputs G and k and that is fed as the two AND gate. So, this is these are my these are my G and this is my G A and this is my k input. Now, here this two output of the AND gate they are treated as the R s R input and the S input. So, this is now this becomes a R s latch, this is my latch. So, this is my R s latch. So, the output q and q bar that what we can do that output is fed back as the input of AND gate. So, this is one and the other output it is fed back to the input. So, these are the this is the simple uh, circuit. Now, if we see the uh, truth table of the J k latch, then it has again J k has value 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. And for each of the cases this both 1 0 0 the present state or the or the you we can tell that at the time instant t the q value should be can be 0 1. Now, whatever be the case if it is 0 1 the q t plus t means the next time it would be a 0 1 it is equal. So, this is a whole state. Similarly, if it is a 0 1 0 1 then always it becomes 0 0 that is a reset state. If j k value is 1 0 then whatever be the value of q it is a 1. So, it is set. Now, we see that what is when j, k, j equal to 1 and k equal to 1. See if j equal to 1 and k equal to 1 then if the q t value is 0 then actually this is 1 0. That means, when q is 0 the next q t plus d that next state will be 1 which is complement of q bar. Again when it is 1 it will be 0 that means, q bar. So, these we can see that this is a toggle means the complement and the 
characteristics equation will be that q k plus q 1 j or q k plus q j. Now, if we see that uh, the timing diagram or the or um, timing specification or timing diagram of the j k latch, then see this is j input. So, up to this time this becomes j, be, j becomes 0 and k is also 0. So, q becomes 0, this is 1 q complement. Now, see that j is 1, k is 0. So, 1 0 means this is a set condition. So, q is 1. So, this is a this is a set. So, this we can tell this is a set condition. These two are giving a set. Now, when j is 0 and q is k is 1. So, that means, j is 0 and k is 1. So, it will give q equal to 0. So, this is reset. This is q equal to 1 set this is q equal to 0 reset. Now, j equal to 1 and k equal to 1. So, this is the j equal to 1, k equal to 1. Now, see here what will happen that q becomes because it is a feedback. So, that it will be 1 0 1 0 this type of thing will happen at both the because it is a complement of q the two outputs are one is complement of other. So, both will toggle means that it will be 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 like that. We define this as the that race condition of j k. So, this phase this is called the race when j equal to 1, k equal to 1. This will appear and this is called the j k race. Means the output toggles. Now, this is a single state change per uh, single state change per clocking event. And solution is another flip flop. So, again we have to modify the circuit. So, that at j equal to 1 and k equal to 1 this situation will never happen. That means, this j equal to this output should not be toggled and it is a master slave flip flop. Now, we see the construction of master slave flip flop. So, first we take two R S latch. So, this is one R S latch now again it has two inputs because it is one R S latch. So, actually two J K flip flops are at attached. And the clock is see here this is very important portion that this is very important portion that the clock clock is inverted. So, the first R is latch the clock fits as it is whereas, the for the second latch the clock is being inverted and 
for this type of flip flop see the AND gate it is a 3 input AND gate instead of. So, this is a 3 input AND gate instead of 2 input and the inputs are either j or k the clock and the feedback. See if we uh, this is this is the sample inputs where clock is high that means it will be enabled the input only when the clock becomes high. So the first R S latch will take the input when clock is high. Now, see when this clock is high or when the first one is taking the inputs or it is operating then the second clock or the or the, the clock input of the second RS latch that becomes 0 because it is inverted and if it is 0 if the clock is 0 then we know that the from the functions of RS latch that it will hold the previous state. So, here when the first R S latch is operating that it is second one is holding the previous state. Now, what will happen in the uh, next time when this clock becomes um, negative or the clock becomes low then the it will not the first uh, R S latch the input will not reach. But the second one as it is inverted for the second R S latch the clock input becomes high and as the clock input becomes high. So, now it will take the input from the previous R S latch. So, but the input of the second R S latch is the output of the first R S latch. So, that means the output of the first R S latch or the output of the first latch is passed to the uh, second R S latch and it is the output of the second one. So, means that when one is operating another is latched and that is why it is called the the first one is called the master stage. This is a master flip flop. So, this latch is the master and this is the this latch is the slave. So, mainly that clock input is inverted and when one clock is high that means on one latch is being operated the second latch is holding the previous state. So, this is the main concept of the master slave JK flip flop. Now, again the if we see the timing specification the timing diagram. of j k latch then see that this is the j input the first one is taken as the j input. Now, second one is k input. So, here the j is 1 j is 1 or what I will take j is 1 k is 0. Now, as the clock is low whatever be the thing the clock is low. 
So, it is a set condition. Now, here when clock becomes high, this situation, this condition that j is 0 here, see better we see here. See this situation here j is 0, k is also 0 and that time that clock, so that clock becomes 0 to 1. So, here it is just before that the clock was 0 just before that. So, here this is the situation when j is 0, k is 0, clock is 0. So, it holds the previous one. So, what will be the value of q? See here that q becomes q becomes 1 that means, this is a reset q and this is a q complement. That means, that the previous output or, or the output of the first latch this p first latch comes here and again the second output of the other, other output second output of the previous latch that comes here. Now, what will happen when j equal to 1 and k equal to 1? So, just we see this condition. See here j equal to 1, k equal to 1. So, just before that clock was 0. Now, when the clock becomes 0 to 1, that means it is a h triggered. Now, the output of the first latch becomes 1, p becomes 1. Now, q becomes 1, q becomes 1 and here obviously it is a complemented, so q equal to 0. So, see that p and p complement, these are my master outputs and these. So, here, here that p equal to 1, and here q equal to 1. Now, when p becomes 0, p becomes 0 and still q becomes 1 and see here even the j and k are become 1, they are not changing, the inputs are not changing, but the these values are changing. See the input becomes stable the j equal to 1 and k equal to 1 they are fixed, but still the output of the first latch that becomes 0, 1, 0 and the slave output also that is also that 1, 0, 1 in that way it is changing. Now, uh, already I have mentioned that flip flop is a H triggered uh, uh, device. So, that can be a positive H triggered or it can be a uh, negative H triggered. So, now we see that what is the positive and negative. So, if we consider a D flip flop, then again that if it is a D, this is my D flip flop. So, D becomes 0 to 1 and this clock becomes clock is 0 to 1 here, clock becomes 0 to 1. So, clock becomes 0 to 1 
here this becomes 0 to 1 positive h divided. Now, then only the q see the output will change the output will change. Similarly, when the clock changes from 0 to 1 here then only the output will change. So, input sampled on rising edge and outputs change after rising edge. This is this has been shown here rising edge is the positive edge. Now, if it is a negative edge trigger the input sampled on falling edge say here this is a falling edge means here this is a clock 1 to 0 and then that for the negative say if it is a negative see here it is not it is not changing. So, for negative even it is a 0 to 1 the clock has changed here the clock has changed here, but the negative edge it is changed it, 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 it has not changed again the output has not changed here, but when it is a when it is a 1 to 0 that means this is a my negative edge triggered then the d change d becomes here d is 0 and the clock as the clock changes. So, the the negative edge uh, triggered output negative edge triggered flip flop or the output of the negative edge triggered flip flop has been changed from 1 to 0. So, uh, for positive edge triggered flip flop only from 0 to when it will be 0 to 1 the output will change when for the negative edge triggered negative edge triggered if it is 1 to 0 then the output will change. Now, so far we have discussed the different type of latch and the flip flop and now if we summarize we see that in real life circuits what are the are uh, um, different kinds of flip flops are being used to realize the large circuit. So, first we have seen that one is that R s clocked uh, latch. So, this is used as storage element in narrow width uh, clock systems, where it is narrow width means it is a it first changes or or the memory if it is a memory or storage where it keeps only for a small time. So, its use is not recommended however, fundamental bu uh, building block of other flip flop types. So, just for some alarm so it can be used. So, only for narrow width clocked it can be used. Now, the JK flip flop it is versatile building block and can be used to implement D and T flip flop usually requires least amount of logic to implement, but has two inputs with increased wiring complexity. So, because of one catching, never use as master slave JK flip flops and this is H triggered varieties exist. So, normal JK flip flops uh, can be used as D flip flop and T flip flop and that is the main use. Now, the simple D flip flop. So, it minimizes wear because we have seen that uh, uh, it is it is the simplest kind much preferred in VLSI technologies because the it is very efficient and takes very less hardware simplest design technique and best choice for storage storage uh, registers. That means, for 1 bit storage this is the the uh, number 1 that D flip flop. Normally, T flip flops do not really exist this is the uh, some uh, uh, flip uh, flops means the toggle type of flip flops 
and but constructed from J k flip flops, because we have seen that J k flip flop mainly toggles and usually best choice for implementing counters. Normally for whatever be the type, we preset and clear that means, one reset and the clear inputs are highly desirable. So, whatever the flip flop Im implementation or whatever type of flip flop we use that we prefer that one clear line and one reset line. So, now the today's lecture and the last day's lecture there can be some of the quiz questions uh, that how one bit memory element is formed by inverter, nor gate and NAND gate. Then second question is what is the difference between flip flop and a latch? What are the setup time and hold time and why they are important in real life circuitry? So, these are the three quiz questions that are mainly based on the uh, last uh, two lectures. Okay, here we end the, the class. Thank you. Last day we have learned how to uh, design a different type of flip flops, say the deep flip flops, RS flip flop, the JK flip flop, and what is their problem or what is the, what are the advantages and disadvantages of different type of flip flops. Now today we will see how um, the more complex sequential circuits can be designed using the different type of flip flops. Now these um, more complex sequential circuits they contain mainly the resistors and counters shifters, mainly the storage elements. Uh, so, first we see the design of resistors and counters in this lecture. Uh, before that, uh, we quickly uh, see the answers of the uh, quiz questions based on the lecture 21 and 22. Now, the first question was the how one bit memory element is formed by inverter nor gate NAND gate. We have read in the last lecture that the one bit memory element that is by using inverter one NAND gate and if it is cascaded with another inverter that means one NOT gate and another NOT gate. 